What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're taking a look at the paid for frame generation app in Steam called Lossless Scaling. I've covered this before on the channel, but they just got a major update to their version three of their frame generation. Also includes upscalers like FSR in here as well, but I mostly concentrate on frame gen for this app. So we're gonna get into it and take a look here. This works on pretty much any Windows device and I'll show you that here as well. But taking a look at the update they have here and we'll take a look at the Steam notes. They've basically added a more efficient architecture and significant improvements to the quality and performance. They've reduced the flickering and boarding artifacts, which is something I definitely want to show in the video because that used to get pretty rough. There's a reduction in the um, overhead and the resources needed here, but you can also adjust the resolution slider to help with GPU load and that type of thing as well. They've got improved latency here uh, with this as well. And I believe you can still engage anti-lag from AMD Adrenaline while using this at the same time to help with that as well. I think I read that somewhere and it was working pretty well. So if we move on here, we'll take a look at the new beta version of this app as well. It looks a lot nicer and I went ahead and switched over to that and it seems to be working pretty well. And I'll show you how to do that here. So we'll close this out. We're going to launch and take a look here. And this is before the beta version still has the update and still has LSFG3. I'll show you here. We can click and activate that. We still have the options here that we had before for our draw FPS. G-Sync support shows up because of my monitor here, but I would turn that off, uh, especially on the handhelds. And then, yeah, everything else is the same down through here. But I'm going to go to the beta version. So I'm going to go to the gear icon, to properties to betas and then the drop down menu I'm just going to switch to beta because I want to go over to that new UI and check that out so we'll do that and it'll just be a quick update and then we'll open this up again and now we'll launch into the beta version which is a much nicer UI everything's basically the same it's all the same features and stuff it just looks nicer here you've got your game profiles you can add here individually which is really nice for that it's something i do in rtss and then control all s is still the hot key for swapping this on and off and i'm gonna set that up as a uh, hot key here on the uh, legion go as well with legion space but lsfg 3.0 you can do times two frames time three times four or custom you have that resolution slider that will adjust five at a time so if you need to take more pressure off the GPU, you can do that. We've got our capture uh, API here and LS1, FSR. This is your upscaling. I typically don't use this. Most games I'm playing have FSR or I'm native, but you do have this here. I recommend sharpening six, seven or eight if you do need to use FSR. And for rendering, I pretty much leave three max frame latency. Uh, and again, I would turn off the G-Sync support. If that happens to be on, leave draw FPS on so we can see our FPS, I'm gonna allow tearing here for the least amount of latency. And yeah, that would pretty much be it for what settings I wanna use there. Now we'll go ahead and close this out and I'm gonna jump over to the Ally X real quick because the point is I wanted you guys to understand this works on pretty much any Windows device. I've got the same beta app running here. I'm gonna run all the same settings and I'm able to use this here. I also use this on my laptop. I use this on an older 1050 Ti PC that I have. And I use this for a lot of emulation games or older games or certain ones that don't have features in them today that I might wanna use frame gen or something. It's been very handy and works well. Even here in Path of Exile, just kind of messing around here on the Ally X, we can easily double our frame rate here. Now, you do take a hit in performance. I left that slider at 100%. So, you know, we're gonna lose five, six, seven FPS here when we activate this with my hotkey for scaling. But you can see there, doubling the frame rate and turning on and off pretty flawlessly there and looking nice. Now over on Elden Ring, it's the same thing, about 44, 45 FPS bouncing around. We'll activate that and come down to a 37 base FPS right there, but it doubles that. And it feels really good and looks nice on here. It's much better than what we had in previous updates of this. I've tried it each time and we used to get a lot of like fisheye effect and a lot more artifacts and issues and ghosting around the edges of the display. And uh, while that's still there, there's still some of that going on. It's not near as prevalent as it used to be here. And it seems to be the case on any Windows device that I'm booting this up on. But let's go over to the Legion Go and we're gonna spend a little bit more time on this device. And I use RTSS or I have a tuner to typically cap my frames. I usually set up and add games individually. So global here is just gonna be allowing me to 
uh, globally set FPS max across all games, but I can also add them in individually, which is why I like using RTSS and MSI Afterburner for everything. I have a full video up on the channel. I'll put a link in the description for you um, that you can check out how to fully set this up and get it working. But that's what I use for frame capping a lot. I also use, and you'll probably use Legion Space. You can do anything from 30 to 144 in one FPS increments there really easily and cap that way while you're in game as well. It won't be per game necessarily, but it works really well there. So back over on the app, I'm going to go ahead and set up these settings again really quickly for those of you that want to see them. And I'm going to, again, leave FSR off for this, but it is a nice feature in here if you need to use the scaling or if you need to drop down your resolution scale for your frame generation here. But I'm going to have LSFG 3.0 here times two on the frames, leaving the capture API alone. I'm leaving the FSR off for now. And we're going to go to our sync mode down here and we're going to put that back to our off allow tearing for at least amount of input latency. Like we were saying, turn off G sync support, keep that max frame latency at three there for me, draw FPS is on. And that's pretty much just my starting point for being able to jump in plenty of stuff to tweak though and change if you want to. And again, I believe you can still use AMD adrenaline's anti lag and stuff like that, or its own upscalers to help out with game performance as well at the same time. Now I'm going to set up my hotkey and Legion space here real quick by going into controllers and Legion space, going into uh, button mapping, the gamepad mode here. I'm going to do view and edit. I'm going to come down to rear view. Now I used to have all these set up, but I've recently done a factory restore. So these are all cleared out. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go on my left controller, top shortcut button on the back. We're going to go ahead and tap on that to program a combination key, which is that control alt S that lossless scaling has for its turning on and off or its scaling and unscaling. So we'll put that in here. We'll save this as our combination and we'll hit Y and that'll be locked on to that button. So now I can hotkey just really quickly in game scale and unscale with lossless. And you'll see me doing that as we get more into the video here. So if you don't know how to do that, that's how you do it. And on any windows device, there's usually a way to set up your hotkeys. Like on the ally X, I have the same thing. So we've got Lost of Scalar open. We're going to jump into Kingdom Come Deliverance for a second here. Uh, you do need to be borderless full screen typically, and you want to match your display resolution to your game resolution. So 1200p for my game right now and 1200p for my actual device resolution. And then that will allow us to properly use lossless scaling frame gen here. So we'll get back into the uh, into the game and we'll check that out. So this game I can run really easily at 800p, but just to show it running a little bit rougher here, a little lower FPS anyway, and using lossless scaling in the 40s here. And I'll use my shortcut on the back that we just set up. And now we can double our FPS. We do lose more performance here. And again, I haven't dropped down that resolution scaling to 90% or 80% or anything like that to help with GPU load and activating this, but just looking at it here this way, it works really, really well. And again, just like on the Ally X, it's much cleaner around the edges, not near as much fish eyeing and stuff as we used to get it by far. It's much more improved than what it was on previous versions. It's not perfect and it still has some of that kind of stuff going on, but it looks great here on the screen and it feels really good in comparison to what it used to be. And I'm not even trying to reduce latency even more or introduce anti-lag from AMD or anything like that. So yeah, it's definitely a very noticeable, nice improvement over what I was getting from lossless before. And I definitely want to be able to go in, set up my emulation on here again, because once again, I've done a factory reset recently and uh, check this out with some of that, where I was getting a lot of that ghosting and fisheye effect that I think is going to be much better now. Same thing here on Elden Ring, just like on the Ally X2, I can jump in here with this performance. Uh, we're at 1200p native, no FSR activated here, medium settings on the game, running at about 21, 22 watts, and yeah, about 30 something to 40 base FPS, and then doubling that and looking really smooth and pretty good image quality here as well for that. And it's not just Steam. You can have lossless open in Steam and again, run this on any emulation app, run it on the Game Pass game or another storefronts game. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty much going to run and scale any app you have open here uh, that you're running like this or game. So yeah, I've had it work really well. You can see it here in Indiana Jones as well from Game Pass. One that's hard to run, hard to keep above 30 F. 30 FPS sometimes, but lossless actually worked really well on here too. And I actually thought it just looked and felt a lot better with lossless on for me here. Uh, it was pretty smooth. So I could definitely see me taking advantage of this in this game because I've been playing it a lot. I'm actually just about to the end. So working really well here too for the game pass games.
Now, of course, it does work best if you lock your frame rate. So again, using something like Rivatuna or just your quick access menu here in FPS limiter, capping your frames in game and using lossless is going to give you the best, most stable experience and even less of that artifacting or ghosting or fisheye effect or anything that you might get that way. So even though this game is hard to keep above 30, uh, we'll go ahead and kick this on here and you'll see we'll be at 30 base, 60 uh, with uh, frame generation and it's pretty stable. It feels good here and looks nice as well. And over on Kingdom Come Deliverance, I'll do it the other way. So I like using Rivatuna again. I set up all my games uh, on there individually and then everything's just ready to go. But globally here, let's just go ahead and change this over since I don't have the game set up individually here. And we'll just put it at 30 FPS. There we go. Let's click back on the game. And now here we go. We'll be capped at 30. And we'll go ahead and turn uh, lossless scaling back on here. It is pretty rough at 30. FPS, <laughs> But it works fine. But I'm not a big fan of the 30 straight up. But anyways, turn that on and we'll go to 60 FPS. And yeah, it does a great job. I think it looks better and smoother than the 30. We might get a little bit of input latency here and there, but ultimately much better than anything we had before with lossless on here. So yeah, obviously capping your frames 30, 40, 36, uh, all the way up to 60 or anything that you can get that way. The, the higher your base frame rate is, the better your experience is going to be overall. But I just wanted to show some of the games I happen to have on these devices and how it is looking and working much better than it was. Definitely want to test it on some more emulation again and some other games. But definitely check this out if you haven't or if you already own it on Steam and haven't checked it out in a while. This update's definitely worth jumping in and taking a look at. So anyways, guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.